concept for an angle. I kind of like it. We're pretty straight on, but it's nice. <laughs> Hi, it's Kara, and welcome to another video. Today we are filming my anticipated releases for the third quarter of the year. So that's July, August, and September. Um, I have my laptop here, which should have at least Goodreads idea of a release date. Not sure if that's accurate. Also, I got a new case. It's really pretty. Uh, and we're also on a new camera. So this should probably be maybe the second or third video, second video probably being filmed on this camera. So do you like it? Do you like it? Um, I'm just going to jump into it because there's heaps of things, especially in September. Like, if you combine July and August together, it's almost the same as September uh, by way of new releases. Obviously, September and November are big key months. So there's a lot coming out. I'm going to put pictures up of everything so you can see them. They all have covers by this point. Uh, and I'm just really excited about them all. <laughs> So the first thing I'm going to talk about today, I'm not kind of doing the months in order, but I'm doing all of July, all of August, all of September, uh, at least according to Goodreads, which I think is not quite right for Australian release dates, um, but we'll see. Or Booktopia's lying to me. So the first one I have here is Jade War by Fonda Lee. This is the second book in the Green Bones Saga. Uh, Goodreads tells me it comes out July 23rd. I read Jade City earlier in the year and loved it. It was so good. Um, it's a Hong Kong kind of... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a kind of... You know, the, the kind of uh, movies... Kung Fu movies. It's a Kung Fu movie, but in a book. Um, it's really fun. Um, but also really dark and really gritty. A lot of things happen. Their magic system is um, surrounding Jade. If you wear Jade in you, it gives you powers, but only certain people can use it. Other people become addicted and it goes terribly. Um, and it's really, really fascinating. I'm, I really enjoyed book one and I can't wait to see where book two goes. Then we have Wild Girls, which I'm absolutely so hyped for. This comes out 9th of July and I'm planning on reading it in July for the Book Junkie trial. So you might have already heard me talk about it in my TBR for that. This is a sapphic horror. I think it's mainly body horror and it focuses on these group of girls that went to this school that are sent out into the wilderness, I guess. They're on like a deserted island, but they're all got some kind of virus that's making them like grow weird growths on their bodies and stuff. It sounds gross, but also amazing. And this cover is the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Then also on July 9th, though I think it's a little bit later in Australia, we have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. Um, I've heard this described, it says here, Project Runway meets Mulan. Um, the cover, gorgeous. I've seen a lot of hype for this, and it just makes me so excited. Obviously, um, I'm guessing Chinese-inspired fantasy, but also a focus on fashion, and that just sounds so cool to me. Also, apparently on July 23rd, but I think the date might be a little later in Australia, is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. Um, this, I think is a it's mexican um with a my oh mexican inspired uh based on mexican folklore and we have the mayan god of death um but in the jazz age the cover looks great um i don't really know that much about it but i'm obsessed with this cover and i'm very keen to read it on july 30th we have the merciful crow the first in our uh kind of group of crow books. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this one, but there's Princes, um, the crow cast of Undertakers and Mercy Killers. So I like the sound of that. That sounds real cool to me. Um, I don't really know that much about it, but it's by Margaret Owen, if I didn't already say that. And I just, something 
captured me about the cover. It's probably lower on my priority list, but I'm really excited to read it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just patting the cat. Also on July 9th, we, which I think is actually again a little bit later in Australia, we have The Storm Crow, which is the other crow book by Kaylin Josephson. This is a family saga in a tropical fantasy setting, which is very exciting. Um, there's magical elemental crows that are part of their everyday life. Um, and, and <coughs> There's a sister dynamic um, with royalty and uh, I can't explain it, but I've heard some good reviews and uh, crows are aesthetic. Like, yes, I'm very keen. Then finally on, I think this is the last, oh no, two more Julys. Uh, we have The Ascent uh, to Godhood by J.Y. Yang. This is, I keep saying G. Yang, but I think it's J.Y. Yang. Um, this is the fourth Tensor Saga novella, um, and it kind of matches book three. Book three was The Descent of Monsters, and this one's The Ascent to Godhood, so I'm interested to see how they link together. Um, and this is a group of, there are a set of tour novellas that are a silk punk fantasy, and I've loved the first three. They were really, really good, so I'm very keen to read book four. And I'm pretty sure this is the final July one on... July 11th is uh, Volume 2 of Heartstopper is coming out, which is a comic series. It was it started as a web series by Alice Oseman and now it's moved into print form. Um, I'm really excited for this. I loved the first one and I'm pretty sure I'd read all of the first one and some of the second one as a web comic. So I'm excited to continue on. Now we're into August. I'm kind of rushing, I feel like I'm rushing through these, but then I'm giving as much of a description as I can, so. Ugh. Um, first in August we have House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. This comes out August 6th and is a 12 dancing princesses retelling um, with some sea themes, I believe, and some darkness. And I, it looks just dark and gritty and great, and uh, I'm very excited. <laughs> also on August 6th, we have The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. Um, I saw in Booktopia for us, this, in Australia, this might be like the 20-something of July. Not sure on the exact date. I've already pre-ordered it. When it gets to me, it gets to me. I'm super keen. This is obviously the second book in the Poppy War series. Um, the first book I really enjoyed, though I can understand why it's not for everyone. Um, and I'm really keen to see what happens in book two. It's very dark and gritty. It's an Asian-inspired fantasy. I think Chinese-inspired fantasy, um, based around the rape of Nanking. Uh, it's tough, but I really enjoyed book one, and I'm really interested to see where book two goes. Another sequel, we have Vow of Thieves, which is the second book in the Dance of Thieves series, which is the spin-off to the Remnant Chronicles, which I really enjoyed. I liked the first Vow of Thieves, um, or Dance of Thieves, which is book one, um, and the cover's gorgeous. The first one was like a blue version of this, and then this one's red. Um, I really, really enjoyed book one. This is young adult fantasy, and it follows kind of entirely new characters in this second installment, like second trilogy but in the backdrop of what happened in the first one. If that makes sense. It's really good. I've been really enjoying it. I forgot to say, Vow of Thieves also comes out on August 6th. And then finally in August we have Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallaro and Emily Henry. This is um, a Thelma and Louise retelling, which sounds fabulous. That sounds right up my alley. Uh, it also comes out on August 6th. Everything's coming out on August 6th, which is the day after my birthday, so I don't mind. Um, and... I don't really know that much about the plot, other than that it's a Thelma and Louise retelling, but do I need to know any more? Not really. I've read stuff from Brittany Cavallaro before and really loved it, mainly just the first book in the um, Charlotte Holmes series, but I'm keen to continue that series, and I'm keen to check out things by Emily Henry, but I haven't read from her yet, so I'm interested to see what they do together. Now we're on to Crazy September. September is a month for a lot of sequels for things. Um, and completions of series. So to start off, my most excited for September, which comes out on September 3rd, is Dark Dawn by Joe Kristoff, which is the final book in the Nevernight trilogy, the Nevernight Chronicle. Uh, I'm dying for this. I'm going to be rereading Nevernight and God's Grave in 
August in preparation, I'm just trash. I know there's things that aren't that great about it. It's a little bit dodgy on some stuff, but I honestly don't care. I'm trash, so I'm really excited for Dutch. Well, I care, but like, it's not gonna stop me reading it. And I'm, I'm trash. I'm going to be reading Dark Dawn. Then another finale of a series, we have Five Dark Fates by Kende Blake, which is the fourth and final book in the Three Dark Crown series. I'm all up to date on this series as well, and I'm super excited to figure out how it finally ends. Like, I'm just so ready to see the ending. This is a YA fantasy um, following three sisters who are all, like, badly it out for the throne, I guess, but they all have different types of magical powers. It goes worse than, like worse more complicated than that the more you read but that's kind of the basic premise i feel like everyone's heard about that series by now a debut that i'm really excited for in september is serpent and dove by shelby maharin um this comes out september 3rd as well oh five dark fates was also september 3rd september 3rd is another big day um so Serpent and Dove is a historical fantasy set in france i think and it involves witchcraft don't really know much more than that, but I've heard some really good things. I first saw it on Emma Books's channel, uh, and she was really loving it, so I added it to my TBR. I'm really excited to read it. Coming out on September 10th is another super hyped release, and this is Gideon the Ninth by Tem Temzin Muir, which is the first book in the Ninth House series, not to be confused with Ninth House by Lee Bajuko coming out in October, so not in this video, I had to check. Um, Gideon the Ninth is a necromancer's in space sci-fi lesbian queer story all these are buzzwords that are like sparking my interest i don't really know much about the details of the plot but a lot of people have been early reviewing it and really loving it people like trust and share opinions with so i'm really excited to read this a fun little one coming out on September 3rd, back to September 3rd, is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab, which is the second Cassidy Blake story. This is her middle grade series. I enjoyed the first one, but I didn't like love it, love it. Um, I didn't love it, love it, but I also really enjoyed it. I didn't hate it, so I'm definitely going to pick up Tunnel of Bones. Um, I think it's just that her middle grade isn't super like cross boundary like so some middle grades could be read by anyone some middle grades kind of lean more towards only being suited for its target audience and this series kind of does that but I enjoyed it it was fun so I'm definitely going to pick up book two another gorgeous release in September coming out on September 10th is The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow Look how gorgeous this is. I know basically nothing. I believe it's a portal fantasy. It says, in the early 1900s, a young woman searches for her place in the world after finding a mysterious book. It's a debut. Apparently it's got amazing writing. I've heard lots of people getting early review copies. Absolutely loving it. And it's gorgeous. So I'm really keen to read this. Another debut, I think, is There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. This um, has a bit one of those cast of characters kind of things. A prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, a reckless gambler with the power to find anything or anyone, and a dying girl on the verge of giving up. Love that. Love that. Um, so... Uh, it says, perfect for fans of Throne of Glass, Children of Blood and Bone, and Ember in the Ashes. Don't like Children of Blood and Bone, but I like Throne of Glass and an Ember in the Ashes. So, um, and also this is more about, like, prophets. Um, seems much more dark and gritty than some of those others, but we'll see. Um, I am really excited about it. A lot of people have been hyping that one too. Another one I'm really excited about coming out on September 24th this time is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. I read, what was her first book called? I'm, I'm gonna read the sequel in July, but I can't remember the first book's name. Um, Deceptive is the f second book, Elusive, which is a like, superhero superpower sci-fi kind of thing similar to villains but uh, like the villain series by Richard o. Schwab but very different at the same time um this is a standalone fantasy I believe we follow Adarin or Rin and there's graveyards um grave diggers the dead don't stay dead Risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legends say that they're the result of a decades-old curse. That sounds awesome. This cover is also really cool. 
I am really excited about this. Uh, another Own Voices fantasy I'm interested in is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. This is Witch Doctors. I think it's an African inspired fantasy. Probably West African, but I'm not 100% sure. Demon Kings. Um, it just looks good. This cover is also amazing. And finally on this list, we have... A oh, when does those come out? Kingdom of Souls comes out September 10th, back on September 10th. Um, and A Treason of Thorns comes out also on September 10th. This is by Laura E. Weymouth. Um, and why it caught my attention is that we have houses with magic. Um, and the magic kind of works for the people. It reminds reminded me a lot of the houses in An Unkindness of Magicians, but on a bigger scale. Um, so... I don't really know much about the details of the plot, but it is a standalone fantasy and I've been hearing a lot of like low-key buzz from the author and I'm really excited about it. So those are all the anticipated releases I'm looking forward to in July, August and September. I'll have another video out like this right at the start of October probably or end of September for the end of the year. But uh, <laughs> this bit was a, long, was a long video or a lot of stuff. So uh, yeah, get excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know if you liked the quality content of the camera stuff. I'm still working on making sure I'm in focus all the time. It's a thing I've never really had to do before, but now we've got this blur thing going. I need to be paying attention. So um, hopefully that all worked out. Let me know. But otherwise, I'll see you soon with another video. Thanks. Bye.